girl happened? No, they broke up. Allegedly. No, no, no. Allegedly. It was all alleged. It was alleged. Hey, girl, hey. It's your girl, Taylor Nicole Limas, and this is Alleged Tea, the podcast. Hey, girl, hey. I know you missed me. I missed you, too. I bet you're probably wondering why there was no episode last week, or if you aren't wondering, you should be wondering, and it was because, honestly, I was having some shit fucking mental health love. I was like, I don't know what's been getting into me lately, but I just feel like I'm in a transition period where I'm kind of just all over the place and I don't really know which way I'm going and everything is kind of and it's unknown and I'm very much a person that needs to control every aspect of my life and not being able to control the unknown because it's <laughs> unknown is a little bit scary yeah but i need to tell you what life's been doing to me lately so let's take a little walk in the park with me or a fall in the park which you'll know soon so i run late to everything okay that is my fatal flaw and my friends have accepted me and loved me fucking through it i think being late to something is disrespectful if i'm being completely honest it's fucking rude you think that your time is more important than the other person's and i happen to be one of those people but i try not to be rude it's just i have poor fucking time management skills and it's like the minute I'm supposed to leave, I could wake up two hours before the time, get ready in 20 minutes. And then I get distracted. And then all of a sudden I was supposed to leave 10 minutes ago. Like, I don't understand what's wrong with me. So I've been working really hard to not be fucking late to things. Okay. At the start of this month, I signed up for a first time jewelry making class. I'm a fucking metalsmith. Did you know that? I'm a fucking metalsmith. If you haven't gotten the vibe that I'm a little bit lost in life, please take it in. Take the vibe in. Have you seen the copper bracelets? I I made all of this. Can I show you this for a second? Oh, it's stuck on my wrist. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Here it is. I made this. Oh, I feel like a true influencer. Look at this. Tell me this isn't Gorgina with the flowers. I metal smith this entire thing. Uh, made the shape, metal cut it. And then yes, my finger is turning green, but that is supposed to happen when you wear copper. Um, it's a natural oxidization. Look at the ring that I made. It says two, two, two. I made this. You weren't even supposed to fucking make rings. And I was like, I think I can make a ring out of this. She was like, go for it, girlfriend. But anyways, so I signed up for this jewelry making class, right? Why you ask? Because since I don't drink anymore, I have literally no idea what to do with my time. And how fucking sad is that? I'm like, what do I do? Like, I used to go to the bars all the time and it's like, I'm getting bored of just sitting in, not doing anything. I, I'm a social person. I need to speak to people. I'm fucking talking the cashier's ear off at Jewel. I signed up for this first time jewelry making class. What happens? I'm late. Of course. Of fucking course I'm late. It wasn't that late. It was like seven minutes. I feel like between five and seven minutes, you're okay. The minute you start hitting the eight, nine, ten minute mark, you look a fucking dick. Like when you're late, you're an asshole. When you're past the seven, eight, eight, nine, 10 minutes, you're a dick. And when it's like 15, 20 minutes, it's just a huge, you basically just walk in with a huge fuck you on your forehead. Like in you walk in, middle fingers up, fuck you, fuck you. I hate all of you. If you're more than 20 minutes late. Anyways, the point was, is that I wasn't that late. It was between five and seven minutes. Okay. And they started on time as they should, as they should, people paid to be there. Um, and I walked in in the middle of the teacher giving her speech on who she is. And everybody looked at me while I was standing in the doorway. And I was like, I am so and she was like, please enter. And then when I sat down, she said, also, please be sure not to be more than 10 minutes late to class. It is not very respectful. And I was like, got it. I know that that's for me. Because I was so fucking mortified of that event happening to me, I was like, I'm not gonna be late anymore. And then I was late to the second class. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I was. And I probably, you're probably wondering, Taylor, how do you manage to be late? Um, I, I have zero fucking memory. I can tell you the exact outfit I was wearing in fourth grade to a fourth grade Christmas play, but I couldn't tell you what you just said to me 20 minutes ago. I don't understand it. I don't fucking get it. I don't, I truly don't get it. But for some reason, I thought that my class was at three o'clock, made it up in my head. I was like, oh, my class is at three. I can't wait. I have so much time. Um, it wasn't until I looked at my calendar and this is why I have a calendar that I write shit on because if I didn't, I my world would be crumbling, okay? I look at my calendar, two o'clock. Why does that say two? And it says two every Monday for the next couple months. Why does that say two o'clock? And it was 1.30. I have to leave at 1.30. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I was now in the range of asshole dick late time. I was about 12 minutes late. Um, I walked in. Thank God they were doing a demo. So nobody noticed me walking in and I just kind of snuck in the back. But since that moment, I was like, I'm not being late anymore. I'm not doing it. It gives me immense anxiety. I hate the feeling. I hate people thinking that I'm a dick because I am a dick for being late. So you know what? I'm going to make it my number one priority to not be late. We're going to figure out this time management thing, whether I like it the fuck or not, right? 
right? So I, this morning, wake up 6.57. I'm like, I'm up and at it, okay? I get up, my workout class is at 9.15. I have a plethora of time because if you're going to a workout class, you're going to the gym, all you gotta do is throw gym clothes on. You have nothing to fucking do in the morning. So I put my gym clothes on, I'm ready for the day. I don't eat before the gym. I can't, it upsets my stomach. I hate burping up the taste of food. I just can't fucking do it, okay? I eat right after the gym. And so I'm like, okay, I got everything ready. I have my coffee. I'm like, you know what? It was raining outside, star, star, star. Like, you know what? I'm gonna take my dog. She's sleeping below me for a W-A-L-K. I can't say the word because she's gonna think that now is the time for that. And now is not the time for that. Now is the time for you and I, okay? So I'm like, I'm gonna take her for a W-A-L-K. I put a jacket on, I put everything on. I go out in front. I walk down one step. I walk down the second step. My foot barely touches the third and I boom, 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 boom. Fucking fall. I, when I tell you I ate shit, ate shit at like 7 a.m. this morning, okay? And I'm 27 years old. <laughs> I'm a young little fucking spring chicken. So I'm like, I'm I'm fine, I'm fine, right? I'm laying on the ground and I let go of my dog's leash. Thank God, she's a runner. She didn't run. She was looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? We're supposed to be going on this WA, okay? And so I'm laying on the ground and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Now mind you, when I hit the last three steps, which I mean all the steps, it hit my back, my, like my lower back. It was like, boom, boom, boom. Not my ass, my back, okay? And when I tried to catch myself, I ended up leaning and whacking my shoulder. Now, <laughs> I was never a pitcher, but these shoulders would tell otherwise because I have the most shittiest shoulders, some would call them British, <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> that I literally, when I sleep, my shoulders fucking hurt, okay? Am I an oversharer? I think I am. Anyway, so I have terrible shoulders. They just hurt all the time. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I have joint issues, okay? I don't know. But my shoulders fucking hurt when I sleep and I lay on my side all the time. So I hit my shoulder and I hit my lower back, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm laying on the ground. It's 7 a.m. Nobody's outside. There's not a single person outside. I'm like, oh my gosh. Immediately my heart starts racing. I'm like, did I break a bone? I've broken so many bones in my life that it wouldn't be a surprise if I did. Like it would not surprise me if, if I broke a bone or fractured something. Okay, I've broken my wrist, I've broken my nose twice, I've broken my foot, my toes, my fingers, bottom of my foot I fractured. I've done so much damage to my body, ankles. I like, it, it's unbelievable. I'm laying there, okay, in a state of shock. Then I'm like, oh my gosh, should I break something? Cause I haven't moved yet. I stayed frozen on the sidewalk, my dog's staring at me. I go, I should probably move a little. What if I'm like severely injured? So I'm like, I move a little. I feel like a little twing in my back. I'm like, oh my God, oh, 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 oh. And I'm like, I should put pressure on these things, right? Because that's how you know if something's broken or not. I can immediately tell if something's broken based on how it feels, right? And so I'm like, I put pressure on my arm and my like legs to lift myself up and I immediately feel like pain in my back. I'm like, oh my God, oh, 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 oh. Then I start thinking to myself, why is nobody helping me? I don't give a fuck if nobody's outside. I don't give a fuck if nobody's up and it's 7 a.m. and I'm outside on the ground. Why is nobody like coming to my rescue? So I look around on my block. There's not a soul in sight, okay? And I'm like, maybe if I'm just louder, somebody will hear me and like assist me and feel bad for me. I'm looking for attention. Yes, ma'am, I am. Yeah. <laughs> You guessed it. I'm looking for attention. I have ze I've had zero. Okay, so I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> uh. by myself. Dog looking at me. I have no leash in hand. She's looking at me, and I'm looking at her. My dog comes towards me, like, what are you doing, bitch? And I'm like, oh, and I'm thinking maybe the louder I am, somebody will see me. Nope, nobody saw me. I was just being an obnoxious little fucking rat on my street, and I had to pick myself up by myself and stand up. Okay, I would like to add, I was wearing outdoor slippers that could have aided in the fact of why I felt. So after I throw my little fucking hissy fit, I'm like, no, I'm a spring chicken. I'm fine. I've been working out. I've been taking care of my metabolism. I'm going to heal quickness. It's all about the mind, babes. It's all about the mind. I'm going to manifest quick recovery. I'm good. Adrenaline's still going. I forgot about that part. So I start walking. At this point, I'm fucking terrified of the sidewalk and I'm skidding my feet like this. Okay. I still want to take my dog for a walk because this girl needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> she still needs to go. She, the, the, her bladder just doesn't stop because because I fell and busted my shit, right? So I start walking and I'm like, okay, Molly, we can make a recovery, right? People are like, Taylor, you're chronically online. Go touch some grass. Bitch, I tried. God said, don't do it again, okay? God said, take your ass back in the house. What the fuck are you doing? So I'm, I, I'm walking her. We're walking down the block. I don't even get halfway down the block. I don't even get halfway down the block. When I do a little one, one of these, <sighs> I slipped a little and caught myself.
myself and my back's already hurting. So pain, immediate pain shot up from my back. I almost fell, didn't fall, caught myself. I look at Molly, I was like, baby girl, we're going home. I'm so sorry, honey. I'm so sorry, we're going back in the house. Mind you, I forgot to add that when I fell, when I initially fell, it was all slush. So my entire gym outfit that I got ready for to be early to class was now covered in mud. And I'm still managing to walk my dog while I'm like limping. And then I almost fell again. So I was like, you know what? Let me take my ass back home. I take my ass back home. I take my dog, take her outside in the backyard. She runs around. She used, she goes to the potty, right? And I'm like, I have to change now. And I'm like, should I even go to the gym? Because now I'm like hurting a little bit. Adrenaline's wearing off. I'm like, oh, my hip kind of hurts a little bit. I should maybe not go to the gym. So I'm like, you know what? No, don't be a fucking little bitch pussy. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out. Okay. I'm going to go to yoga class. It's going to be great. It's probably good for stretching. Mind you, my shoulder's fucking in pain and my hip. Was that a poor choice? Was that a poor fucking choice? Maybe, maybe. Okay. But it doesn't get any better. It gets worse from here. If you haven't fucking questioned the story by now, I go to the gym. I take a hot yoga class. Do I take a regular yoga class? No, I take the yoga class that has the weights in it and you're jumping up and down. I'm hyperventilating. I already have sports asthma. I can't breathe. My hips fucking hurting. My shoulders hurting. I'm like, but well, I, all you gotta do is make for through 45 minutes. That's 15 minutes, three times, which isn't that much in my mind. If you do it like that, if you do the math, 15 minutes, I break everything down to 15 to 10 minutes. If it's 20 minutes, oh my gosh, I only have to do 10 minutes, two times. If it's 45 minutes, oh my gosh, I only have to do 15 minutes, three times. And then when I see it's a 30 minute mark, I'm like, I'm more than halfway done. Okay. That's how I do girl fucking math, bitch. Okay. Break the time down like that. Anyways, from the yoga class, I finished the yoga class. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I think the endorphins started releasing because I was working out. I'm feeling good. Am I tired? Yes. Am I exhausted? No. Am I in pain? A little. I'm like, okay. And mind you, it's heated yoga class. I leave the yoga class. I go and sit in this like little area to cool down. And one of my friends comes out, my gym friends, she goes, are you going, are you staying for hot yoga? And I was like, um, I don't know. Maybe I hadn't really thought about it. She goes, yeah, there's a hot yoga class after this. Just go right in and just do a double class. And I was like, should I? This is where I made the uh, really fucking terrible fucking choice. I cooled off. I was like, I feel good. I, I, I think the hot yoga would be good stretching for my back and my hip and my possibly dislocated fucking shoulder. So I go to the hot yoga class. It's a 60 minute hot yoga class. Did I know that? No, no, that's four 15s. That's four 15s. I did three 15s. I gotta do four 15s. I go to this hot yoga class. When I tell you, I don't know if you've ever been in so much pain where you get nauseous. Like you, you hurt so badly that you like your stomach starts to get queasy. Like your stomach starts turning. Like you're on a fucking roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in downward dog about to fucking vomit. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I kept having to take breaks and touch the floor so I wouldn't faint. Now you would probably think Taylor, your responsibility to maybe walk outside, get some air, come back in. I have a, like a mental problem where like, I don't want to feel like a quitter. So I'm just going to keep doing it even though I probably shouldn't. So I, I keep doing it. We're at the end of the class. I'm running on fumes, bitch. Fumes. Okay. There is nothing left in this gas tank. If anything, it's windshield fucking fluid. Okay. I, I have zero left in me to give. I'm half assing these yoga poses. She Now at this point, we're stretching out. Okay. She's like, make sure to lift your chest up, turn to the side, keep a straight spine. I can't keep a straight spine because I'm pretty sure that mine's crooked after I fucking fell this morning. Right? So I'm half assing it. I'm kind of slouching a little bit and I'm just like, just get through the last five minutes of class. What does Miss yoga, yoga teacher do? What does she do? She comes up and adjusts me. Now you can raise your hand in the beginning of class. Be like, hi, um, I don't want to be touched. I missed that part because I was too focused on the fact of if I should take the class or not. Oh, oh, and I forgot to add, was I on time for the first yoga class? No. <laughs> No, I wasn't because I fucking fell. Okay. So I already, I'm a three for three for being late to shit. We're in the class. She adjusts me. She goes straight back and then pulls my shoulder back. When I tell you pain shot up through my back, I was like, holy fucking shit. And then I started thinking to myself, what if I just manifest it's not pain and I'm fixing myself because I'm in a state of pure delusion. And I'm like, I was just, it's fixing me. It's fixing me. Yes, it is. The class finishes. I've never wanted to leave the gym so badly in my entire life. You're probably like, Taylor, I hope you went home. You iced it. You took some ibuprofen. No, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. I have a problem. I was like, well, I'm really close to the grocery store. I'm like five minutes away from the grocery store. I'm gonna go to the grocery store really quick because I really wanna make these vegan keto friendly enchiladas, okay? I was like, I really want these enchiladas. I've been eating the same healthy shit for the past three weeks now. I want something different, okay? So I was like, I could definitely make these vegan. And I'm not vegan, by the way, I'm a vegetarian, but like I eat a lot of vegan food just because my family's vegan. So I'm like, you know what? I can make this. I could just make a quick little stop at the grocery store. So I go to the grocery store at this point. 
I'm limping. The pain is now swelling to where it was like one singular point to now it's like the whole right side of my body. And then I realized, I don't know if anybody else experiences this, but anytime I feel some type of pain, my hands are gonna shake, my whole body's gonna shake, I'm gonna look like I'm freezing. And I mean emotionally and physical pain. Like if you break my heart, my whole body's gonna shake. Like I just get the shivers, okay? And if I'm in physical pain, whole body's gonna shake, okay? Anxiety, whole body is gonna shake, right? I'm terrified, whole body's gonna shake. I'm a shaker, I don't know what to tell you. These hips don't fucking lie though. <laughs> Let me tell you, this milkshake does not bring all the boys to the yard because there's not a single man in my DMs. Anyways, the point is, is that I shake a lot, okay? I'm shaking. I am in severe pain. I'm like, okay, this is running up now to like a seven or an eight and I have a pretty high pain tolerance. To give you a range of my pain tolerance, I have twice, actually three times in my life, broken a bone, not known, and used that ligament for weeks on end and then found out later that I broke it. I did it with my toe. I did it with my foot. I did it with my wrist. I did it with my finger. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know that my bones are broken. I just continue to use them. I'm like, oh, that kind of hurts. Okay. So to be at a seven or eight is like a little bit concerning for me, right? I'm in the grocery store. I must have looked like a little sad lost puppy dog in the grocery store because the amount of concerning looks I was, I must have been like, pushing my cart. I'm not even joking you, okay? I get my shit. And then when I'm at the grocery store, I always say, I'm not gonna grab a cart. I don't need a cart. I don't need a cart. I just need to grab three things. And then all of a sudden I'm holding 17 fucking things that I didn't think that I even needed. And then I need to go grab a cart. It was just, anyways, I'm limping, I'm limping, I'm limping. I grab my shit. I get to the fucking cash register and I'm like, okay, thank God I'm here. They're gonna ring me up and I can go home. I was gonna buy a lottery ticket because I won $6. Yeah, that's right. I'm a fucking winner. No matter what anybody says, I'm a fucking winner, okay? And so I was like, I won $6. I'll buy a lottery ticket. That'll be the light to my day. I look over lottery machine is the lottery fucking machine is broken <laughs> The lottery machine is broken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah where the scratch-offs are they're like fixing it like the whole thing's open there There's a fixer guy there. There's a mechanic and I was like, okay, I get it God today is just not my day I understand you want me to go the fuck home. I get it. I'm going home, right? I buy a Lonnie new the caffeine beverage the like Celsius one, but the better version I'm like, okay, I got my Lonnie new ring me up, right? Oh, and then she goes um I ID for the alcohol. I go, ma'am, that's not alcohol. That's a caffeine beverage. She goes, oh, is it? And I'm like, yeah, it's not alcohol. She goes, oh, and her defense, it did look like a white claw box. Like they do kind of look like alcohol. And so she goes to scan it. The, the fucking thing won't scan. The thing won't fucking scan. So I'm like, now I'm never, I will never get mad at a cashier unless you're being an asshole to me, but I'm never going to get mad at you for something that's not fucking working. I, I'm, I've, I'm, God has put, I asked God to show me patience and he put me in, in situations that require a maximum amount of patience. Like I, and where I'm like, I know what you're doing, God. You're preparing me for when I have children. <laughs> I know. It because when I have a child, she's gonna fuck my life up. She, I already know, it, and it's gonna be a girl. It's gonna be a girl. It's gonna be a girl, and she's gonna be crazy as fuck. And I'm gonna be like, this is why. This is why I went through all of that to deal with this single psychotic fucking child. That's literally the epitome of who I am because I'm psychotic. Okay. So like, I, I'm not saying I hate my child. I'm saying I love my child. I love my future child. I, it's just that I know that she's gonna have parts of me that are crazy. Like I have auditory problems. Okay. By that, I mean, I can't stand certain noises. Like, and it's getting worse as I get older. My mom thinks I'm insane. It started in early high school. College is when it really kicked off, okay? Because when I need to study, the ticking of a clock will send me off a bridge, okay? Like, like a, a constant tapping, like a the dripping of a faucet, anything. I will go insane, okay? You know like that movie Captain Hook where he can't stand the ticking of the clock that's in the crocodile's stomach? He just can't stand it? Yeah, that's fucking me, okay? I'm Captain Hook in this bitch, okay? So anyways, I understand, okay, that I'm gonna have a child that's gonna be crazy because if she has my auditory problems as well or she doesn't, she's just loud, crazy, obnoxious, which children are, I think I might, I'm gonna take several deep breaths. I'm gonna, I'm gonna breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe and distract the child. I'm gonna just distract her. I'm gonna be like, let's play a quiet game. Oh my gosh, let's play a quiet game. Shh, be quiet. God, listen. Listen. Use your ears. Use your ears. We're gonna color. We're gonna color quietly. Quietly. What color is super quiet? Red is really, really quiet. 
That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna assign quietness to the level of colors. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be a great mom. I will. I will be a great mom in the future. Not now. In the future. But anyways, let's get back to the story. I'm at the cashier. And they're, they, they're scanning my Alani. No, it's not scanning. It's not scanning. Right? And I'm like, my back is hurting. I feel like 80 year old grandma that can't, that had several hip replacements standing there. And I'm like, please, dear God, just let it scan. Let it scan. She scans. She goes, do you know how much this was? I'm exhausted. Again, running on fumes. I'm like, I don't know. It's like 20 something dollars. And I'm not gonna overcharge myself. I'm gonna lowball myself, right? Why would I overcharge myself? So I was like, I'm pretty, I know it was under 25, but, and it wasn't over 25. So I know 25 was there, but I'm not gonna say 25. I'm gonna say 20 and maybe they'll put in 22 and I get a dollar off, right? Like, hello, fuck the system, right? Anyway, so I tell her that and she goes, hmm, well, you don't know the exact price. And I was like, it was like 20 something dollars. And then she goes, well, I'm gonna have to get a price check. And I'm like, okay, fair. That's fine. I like the people that just say, oh, you think it's $20? So do I. Two zero dot zero zero. And then they just put it in. I love those people, but I, I still love this girl too, but she didn't do that. So she goes a uh, price check to whatever, right? So they go, when I tell you I was standing there, I'm not even joking you. I'm not even joking. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> and I literally at a certain point started laughing because I was like, this is just, this is me. This is something that would happen to me. This is something that would happen to me. I'm in pain. I'm tired. I shouldn't have gone to the fucking grocery store. And God's like, yeah, you pray for to have all this patience. Well, here, let's see if you have the patience that you have. So I'm standing in line and I'm like, wow, this is taking a long time. I was like, let me just start looking around the store. So I start looking around the store. I'm like, I in the store. Look around. I, this is when I noticed that the lottery machine thing is broken. And I'm like, wonderful. So my day is not going as fucking planned. So I'm standing there, whatever. I wait patiently. They come back with a different Alani new and scan it. Tell me why that bitch was $30. Now, I used to be scared to speak up, like, especially at the nail salon when I didn't like something. I was a bitch that got in my car and cried, okay? I'm not gonna I'm tell you I think that that's ugly, but over time, I've learned to speak up when it comes to money because my money, my pockets, we're not messing with that, okay? Babe, I don't give a fuck if I look ridiculous saying that was supposed to be 50 cents left. That was my 50 cents, and in my eyes, you just stole from me. So I'm like, um, excuse me, no, that looks wrong. I think that's a different flavor or something because this is peach and you grab cosmic fucking brownie and that's not the right one and that says $30. I wouldn't pay $30 for this. I'm telling you that right now. It was in the twas, not the thus, okay? He goes, mm, they're both a 12 pack. And I go, well, um, where I grabbed it, it said it was $20. Now I'm not gonna be a Karen and fucking argue with the person. I was like, can we just, I was like, can I just walk over with you to where it was at? And then the cashier corrects me and she goes, no, that was the wrong price. The price is here. Like, I guess the system needed to register some fucking shit. So I was like, okay. And now I feel like a Karen, right? <laughs> I feel like I just, I didn't yell at him, but I was like, like, no, I'm not paying that, you know? So I was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, you know what? In times like this, when I feel like an asshole, I just crack a joke, right? I just crack a joke. And I was like, you know what? I'll do anything for caffeine, right? And he goes, he started laughing. He goes, those things are expensive. And I was like, well, it is caffeine. He goes, I love caffeine. I go, I love caffeine too, actually. I could use some right now. And then they start laughing. I was like, okay, phew, they don't fucking hate me. They bag my stuff. Yes, they do. They bag my stuff. And I'm walking past the lottery machine. That's not working. That's not working. And I'm like, should I cash my lottery ticket so I can have some cash on me? I don't know. Oh, that might make me, make me feel fucking good. And I'm like, there's nobody at the thing standing there at the customer service thing. So I was like, probably not. I'm not going to go. So I start walking. I'm all sad because I wanted to buy a $2 scratch off as like the highlight of my day. I'm, I'm not even joking you. I'm walking out of the grocery store with my cart, limping, sad, energyless. Okay. And I go to go out of the automatic outdoor, there is one door on this exit, okay? There's not two, like some grocery stores have two lanes to go out, or you have like an in and out. No, this one is just one door that leads you out, okay? Or you have to back out and go on the opposite end of the store and go out the other door, okay? I'm walking with my car. I go to go forward, <laughs> the door doesn't open. Like it's just doesn't open. And it's an automatic door, so it's kind of like heavy. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I have my cart, so I like, <laughs> I ram my cart into it because I'm like over it. You know, I'm like, fuck it, open. And the door's not opening. I'm like, I can't fucking do this today. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I just rammed my cart. <laughs> I just rammed my 
my car into the door. I was just like, boom. And I fucking ram into it. The thing opens and I'm like, fucking good enough for me, right? Like, it's fine. It's whatever. I come home. I make my enchiladas, which by the way, was delicious. And also I've been drinking these things. These things are so good. Can I put you on to something really quick? This is not an ad. This is literally because I love a good deal and I love something that tastes good, okay? If whey protein, like actual milk, fucks up your stomach, which it probably does because more than 50% of Americans are lactose intolerant. If you didn't know, fun little statistic. Um, This is plant protein, so it's not gonna mess up your stomach. It's 20 grams of protein and it tastes so chocolatey and delicious. And it has minimal to no sugar. I think it has zero added sugar. Yeah, there's no added sugar. So this is like one of the best things. It's called Orgain and it's the plant protein one. Anyways, that was my day today. Okay, so now I'm in severe pain. I don't know what I did. I pray to God I didn't hurt myself and sprain something or pull a ligament. I have pulled a ligament in my hip before. That was fucking hell. They stuck me with a horse needle. They didn't even tell me they were gonna stick me with a horse needle. They said they were gonna, they're like, oh, we're gonna give you a little shot of dye so we can see the tear. I was in, I was 16. I played basketball my whole life, okay? I'm like, okay. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna do a little shot. It's gonna be super small. And then you're just gonna feel a little pinch and then we're gonna see the dye and then we'll do a scan, see where you tore your ligament and you'll be good. And I'm like, okay. I'm laying on the table pantsless because you can't have pants on when you're, when they're doing this. I have my underwear on, but I don't have pants on. And I have this like sheet over me. You know how like when you're getting waxed, they, get, they put a little towel over your JJ. Imagine like that, okay? And I'm standing, I'm laying there, this cold metal sheet, okay? Cause they're gonna do an x-ray on my hip. I'm terrified of needles, like terrified needles. I don't like shots. I don't like anything with needles. I don't fucking like it, okay? I, I have a severe, I, I just don't like it. I will faint. I will faint out of the weakest stomach. You show me anything disgusting that has to do with blood, broken bones, skin, anything, I will faint. I will faint. I, I have to tell the people every time when I get my blood taken, I might faint. And then they don't believe me. And then I'm like, I think I'm gonna faint. And then they start panicking. And I was like, just tape my head to the back of the fucking chair. Anyways, 16 years old, laying on this metal thing, right? They're like, oh, we're gonna do like a little bit of dye or whatever. I'm laying there. Remember how I told you I'm a shaker when I get scared, right? I'm laying there I'm like looking up at the ceiling like, oh. This, I just want this to get over with. My hip's been killing me, like blah, 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 whatever. And then a nurse comes in with a tray of huge needles. And I'm like, oh, that must be for somebody else. So it's not for me. They told me it was gonna be like a little flu shot. <laughs> they told me it was gonna be something as well. Um, and then the doctor comes in and he goes, um, Miss Nurse, have you prepared the um, shot for Miss Taylor Loomis? And she goes, yes ma'am, it's right here. And she lifts it up and I'm not even kidding you. It was like this long because it had to go in between the joints of my hip and they had to spray the ink there to see where it went. And he holds it up. And I tell you, I started uncontrollably shaking. And when I mean uncontrollably, my knees were bouncing off. Do you know how embarrassing that was? My knees were bouncing off this metal tray that I was like laying on. Okay, my knees were like dunk, dunk, dunk. And I couldn't control them. It was involuntary. I couldn't control them. And he was like, and my body was just shaking. He was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm just really scared of needles. I didn't know that the needles were gonna be that big. I did not know that. And he was like, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. It's not gonna hurt. Bitch, you're shoving a needle in between my joints. What the fuck do you mean it's not gonna hurt? Anyways, it didn't, it didn't hurt that bad. I was being kind of a little baby, but I'm just afraid of needles. So anyways, that's been my day today. I prayed to God that I don't have anything torn or any, and I just heal tomorrow. And that's where these come in. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, I've never felt so transported into kindergarten until I like started taking a creative class. I forgot how people feel about creativity. There's a couple people in my class that like to steal ideas. I feel like, <laughs> so I don't even wanna say this because I don't wanna make enemies in this class, but basically I feel like creativity should be collaborative and it, there's like a little creativity competition in my class and I'm like, this is supposed to be fun. I don't wanna, I don't wanna compete with anybody. I just wanna have a fun fucking time okay anyways we created these bangles which was so cool because i made this myself and you're probably like wow taylor that's gorgeous yeah i made this out of lace and i metal smith this entire thing which it's little baby hearts that i put all along and then i found out through something okay that copper is like really healing for your body and it's really beneficial to wear it and since i have <laughs> severe joint pain right now. I heard copper help. I was like, let me just put on all my fucking copper jewelry that I made. So I've been wearing this all day in hopes to um, cure myself. Now, that was today. Let me tell you about yesterday since we're catching up on ourselves. So today is Tuesday. Yep, I'm doing the podcast the day before because again, <laughs> time management.
movement skills need to be tracked. But anyways, um, I did dye my hair. If you want to take a little look, sees at her. I think it looks pretty good. Let me take her down so you can really see full effect. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had really grown out roots, which you can still kind of see, but I kind of blended them. Like my roots aren't as aggressive and I plan on just letting my hair grow and keep doing that going forward. However, um, it wasn't as easy as I'm making it seem right now. Like, oh yeah, I just did a little highlight. No, that's not what happened. In fact, I had a full blown fucking meltdown as one would do if they're dyeing their hair impulsively last minute when they said that they weren't gonna bleach their hair, right? You know what I mean? Which I think I have the blonde effect. Um, Not the one where people make fun of blondes and say that they're stupid. I have the blonde effect where I just think I'm prettier blonde. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I was blonde when I was younger. I don't know if it's just because I think it suits my skin tone better. You can let me know, but I just think I look better as a blonde. Even when I let my hair grow out, I did like it, but I just think personally, I look better blonde. I just love my hair blonde, but I'm trying to get my hair health in fucking order, which is like very difficult to do if you want to be blonde, right? Okay. And as I get older, my hair is getting darker and darker and it's getting harder and harder to lift to be this blonde. Okay. So I'm having difficulty. I'm having an identity fucking crisis. Okay. I dyed my hair yesterday on a whim. I'm like, okay, I started dyeing my hair. Um, it looked terrible. It looked absolutely terrible. I was like, this is hideous and ugly. I hate it. I did book club. I let hundreds of people see my ugly hair and people were like, your hair looks so good. And I was like, you're a fucking liar. I hate it. I'm like, I'm not even joking you. I'm one of those people that will literally, I'm very particular about my hair. I want it a certain way. That's why I never go to a hair salon because I know that they don't have the vision that I have. And if it doesn't come out exactly how I want it, I'm gonna throw a fit. And like, why am I gonna be somebody's terrible fucking customer? I mean, I pro I wouldn't say anything to them. I would just cry about it later. But it's just like, why would I do that? Why would I pay to not have a good experience? I've never really had a good experience at a hair salon. Minus the fact that I had a bob at one point. But like, I've never really let anybody dye my hair. Okay, I like my hair a certain fucking way. So I do it, it's terrible. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I've never been in this predicament before. And I'm trying to preserve my hair health. The front pieces is what I was most concerned about. See these front pieces right here? I want these pieces to always and forever be blonde. Blonde forever, blonde forever. I just like how it frames my face. I think I just look good like this. And um, when I dyed these parts right here, um, it turned orange. And I was like, why is that happening? And it was because it wasn't close to my head, which I was normally used to doing my roots, which would cause heat to make it dye faster. Um, it didn't dye that fast. So I was like, oh, wonderful. Um, should I bleach it again? And I was afraid that I was just gonna melt off these two pieces and have two little antennas here. So I was having a little menti bee. Um, so you could say for the past four days, I've just been living in high anxiety, high stress. And then in my alternate universe world, which is my book that I'm reading that everybody wants me to review, Miss Verity. Yes, ma'am. I'm reading Verity by Colleen Hoover. I have never read it before. I've never heard of the book. I'm a newly turned reader. What in the actual fuck? Like, it's like I can't get a break. You guys are like, read this book. And then I'm stressed in my fantasy fucking fiction world. Like, okay, here, this is what's going on. So for those of you that don't know, which majority I feel like do, Verity by Colleen Hoover is a book about, it's a psychological thriller. It's a book about this woman. She's a writer. She's not a very good writer. She doesn't do well when selling her book. She meets this man. This man says his wife is not doing well physically and mentally and needs somebody to finish his wife's book series. And he finds this woman and this woman has to finish the book series. Upon meeting this guy and going through the wife's office, she starts uncovering some very interesting things about the family. If you have not read this book, stop watching now because I'm about to give away a ton of fucking spoilers. If you have read the book, take a fucking deep dive with me. So I'm on chapter 10, bitch. I'm on, cha I'm on chapter 10 and I have been rereading chapters in the perspective of if the wife is psychotic, the girl is psychotic, Miss Lowen, or if the husband is psychotic. And then I have this weird psychological turn where maybe it's the son. And then I'm like, what if she is actually so batshit crazy that she's just making this all up in her head? Like, what if none of this is real? Or what if, what if, these are all my theories. Okay, are you ready? Okay, what if the Miss Lowe is actually the wife and she's in a medically induced coma or she's like um catatonic or like she's like stuck you know what i mean and she's making this all up in her head and she's actually the wife in real life and she's just in this fantasy world in her head and then um, that okay that's one right that's one theory second theory is the the son is strange i don't know i feel like maybe the son is like a little demon child and he like is killing the mom because why did he have a knife why did the son have a knife next to the mom's 
stupid. We're like acting like the, the son is innocent. Part of me is like, what if the son is a little demon child and killed the two sisters and then did something to the mom and they're trying to protect the son because they love the son, but the son's a little demon child. Okay, that's two. Three is the husband's batshit fucking crazy. The husband got jealous because the wife was doing so well with her book that he got super jealous because remember when the husband ran into the friends at the grocery store and they were like shooting shots at each other they were doing like low blows i think that was a little odd right but i also am like did the author like did miss colleen hoover just add this in here to confuse us all and like make us think it's the husband when it's actually not the husband and so i'm like is it the husband but if it was the husband it would be because she was jealous he was like a little slut and he was like fucking around on people and because she said who's who's your little friend like who's this girl like as if he had cheated before so i'm thinking maybe the husband had cheated in the past and the friends know and because he knew about the one friends affair and he like killed off tried to kill off his wife it didn't work because she's still alive but then the weird thing is is why is she getting up and shit she's definitely okay and then the, th the third part that was a, that's a side thing the husband's just jealous and he's just crazy right and then the third thing is is that the wife like part of me is like the wife is alive the wife made this whole thing up and she's actually perfectly fine she just wanted to make it look like she got hurt and so she could like somehow get money or like disappear from making the book because she didn't want the fame and she wanted a regular life or something something is up with the wife i feel like i feel like the wife is possibly still alive and she and, and she, not still alive but i feel like the wife is still perfectly fine and she is like i don't know and part of me feels like the 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 other children are still alive in this theory where it's the wife i feel like the wife created this thing to get away from the husband and the husband's actually crazy but now you're probably like taylor well what about the pages what about the book that she wrote right i feel like two theories now i i love that you guys are gonna like listen to this and be like this bitch is so wrong or she's kind of on the right track okay two theories about miss verity's book okay is that the husband wrote it the husband wrote the book to frame the wife to make it look like she was crazy purposely gave it to miss low the, the author that's re rewriting the book to make her come forward and confess it and write a book and then so it'll come out that this is what really happened and he could put all the blame on the wife and then get away scot-free part of me feels like the husband wrote the book i feel like the husband wrote the book I, I don't feel like the wife wrote the book but then it's like that fourth one the fourth theory where it's like this could all just be in her head i've seen a lot of movies before where it's like you watch this whole movie and then it turns out to be a dream that's what i feel like this could be she's in a medically like induced coma and none of this was real like none of it was real and then the other part of me is like is she a ghost <laughs> I'm like losing my mind over this book, okay? I don't really know where it's going, but I only allow myself to read it at nighttime because that's like my winding down time and it helps me go to sleep. And I'm already halfway through the book, bitch. So I'm like, mm. and this is supposed to get me out of my reading slump because you know what we're doing? Baddies in 2024 are becoming readers, okay? That's what we're doing. I feel like reading is so knowledgeable. It helps you pick up on bigger words, helps you expand your vocabulary, helps you sound smarter. You like start speaking differently based on how much you're reading. And I really, really, really want to get into to these other books that I have and I also want to read what is that book called A Court of Thorn and Roses but everybody says that the first book is really slow so I'm like that I'm like I'm afraid that I'm gonna buy it read a couple pages get bored and then not read it whereas this book is like pretty fast paced where it's kind of like getting me out of the reading slump I'm really finding out about myself that I am a fantasy girly through and through I really am and all the books that I buy you see them up there you see them right there all the books that I buy are self-help books because you know why I'm a fixer I am a fixer am I my core i'm a fixer at my core you need something i can fix i can do it because i'm a fixer at my core leading into that um, a lot of people have been asking me when i'm gonna start dating my parents are like when are you gonna start dating you need to find a good boy you need to find a little good boy and settle down and start your life and i'm like uh i didn't know my love life pertain to you guys thank you very much um and a lot of people have been asking me when are you gonna start dating again when are you gonna start dating again and i'm here to answer all your undeniable questions okay truthfully and honestly i could live the rest of my life like this i feel so content feel so happy i feel so healthy and knowledgeable and i feel so at peace and ease and usually around 
around this time is when a man disrupts it, right? It's, it's when a man disrupts it. But I've been learning a lot about myself in relationships lately, like just through journaling a lot and just kind of like really having a deep introspection on who I am as a person. And I think a lot of the times with me specifically in relationships where I had my downfall, which is usually very in the very beginning stages, is that I give people the benefit of the doubt too much. And I will go into something and I will see the red flags and you guys have called me out on this before and I know it, but I give that person the benefit of the doubt because I fall into the treat people how you would want to be treated. And in my mind, when I think about treating people the way that they want to be treated, I think about all my flaws from me growing up in my childhood and who I am as a person and would hope that somebody would forgive me for my flaws. So when I see somebody else's flaws come up, I just naturally dismiss them or forgive them or give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they didn't mean that. Maybe they're just working through something. And I have to realize that not everybody thinks like how I do and that when I see a red flag or something that I don't deem as okay or healthy, that I need to just let that person go very early on. And I think that's where I was just missing the mark on dating altogether. So that's the conclusion that I've come to with my dating life. And I've also kind of taken a step back from putting my dating life online and on social media because even though that's how I got started, I'm trying to make a pivot towards a different direction because I think that that can have a huge downfall on the type of people that I attract. It's different if I'm doing content on like reviewing things or a vlog or my life, but when my focal point of my content is about my dating life, I feel like it can attract people that want to be a part of that storyline for the sake of just clout or attention or because it's like romanticized and this like cutesy little idea. And it can also at the same time push away people that value privacy. So I'm kind of trying to find the middle realm of talking about my dating life and talking about what I'm doing, but at the same time remaining to have some privacy for me and the people that I'm seeing. I don't know if it's ideal for me to talk about my dating life going on in the future, but like obviously I would want to and I would want to date somebody that would want to be open to that, but I also haven't met somebody that would be interested in sharing content. But I think the importance is that in the first beginning stages of me dating somebody should remain private because I think that's kind of where I went wrong in the beginning. Like I think I'm just, I get excited. I start talking about them. They get their ego blown up and think that they're more important than they actually are or they think it's more serious than it actually is because I started talking about them and introduced them to my following. And then it's this weird dynamic where we're not dating, but I'm talking about you on social media. Do you know what I mean? And so like, I think that it's not realistic in the real world. And I think that when I was doing it, it was fun, but it wasn't ideal for like a long-term relationship. I don't know how I'm gonna do this going forward. Like, I don't wanna push my social media on anybody and I don't know how I'm gonna start to begin dating again, but I just don't know. Like, I have a lot of dreams and desires and I truly honestly think, bitch, that I'm gonna meet my soulmate when I go to Germany, which I didn't tell anybody yet, but now I'm telling you. I will be going to Germany this year and I've always wanted to go, but I put it off because of relationships and people and jobs and I finally booked the trip. And so I'm like convinced that I'm gonna meet my soulmate in Germany, I don't know why. Um, but it's also really hard to meet people like in person and not online. Like I really wanna steer away from the dating apps and meeting people online. I also think it's harder to meet people like in the winter time, especially in Chicago, like everybody's like a little hermit. But I've been like looking at other ways to meet people, like going to a pottery class or going to an arts class, but like trying to find people in the same realm and the same world that I'm in. Like I plan on taking a photography class pretty soon, but it's also kind of, cause my life's not in the place that I need it to be in where I feel like stable enough to be in a relationship but at the same time it's like when am I when is my life not gonna be chaotic you know what I mean like this is just who I am as a fucking person okay but I'm like looking at my vision board right now like oh I have all these dreams but I just don't know which one's gonna come in order and how it's gonna happen but I do think it's gonna happen I just don't know yet and I don't like the idea of like looking for it always I think I want to like position myself in situations that would allow me to meet new people but not necessarily meet my soulmate and I think that that's another area where I kind of went wrong where I was constantly looking for opportunities to date instead of putting myself in an area position or space that my soulmate would be in do you know what I'm saying like there's a difference than like looking for a person and like going in areas that I love to be in and I enjoy and hoping that another person that also enjoys those things would also be in that space and that I can make friends and then possibly a soulmate do you know what I'm saying like then possibly 
possibly date somebody. Like I'm more so looking for friends that have the same interests as me. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Like I don't want to, like when I say I'm gonna join like a photography class and videography, like that's somebody that would be interested in social media. That's somebody that would be interested in creating a movie or doing a film or interested in like the creative production of kind of what I do, right? And those types of people, I feel like would introduce me to other types of people and I can make more friends that way. And I think I'm just in a space right now or a headspace where I value creativity over everything. Like I just so badly love to create things and love to indulge in stuff that involves opening my creativity that I want to surround myself with people who also like the same things. Because what's that saying, right? Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And not saying that my friends... <laughs> I'm not saying that my friends are shitty. I love my friends, okay? But I feel like my current friends right now are at different points in their lives and I'm not at that point in my life. All my friends are, besides Kevin, are settling down and, you know, thinking about starting a family, thinking about marriage, and I am not there yet, okay? So if you're like me and you're 27 years old and everybody around you is getting married and settling down and having kids and you're not there yet, you don't have to be there, okay? Everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own way. There's no strict rule. You don't have to get married straight out of college or when you, when you don't have to get pregnant by 30. Like, there are no rules okay you can do whatever you want and what i want to do i feel like this year for me is focusing on what i want and i feel like for a long time especially being a chronic people pleaser i did what everybody else wanted to do but everybody what made everybody else happy what people wanted to do what was the easiest route what was the the thing that the group agreed with i never like steered away and did my own lone wolf thing and i think this year i'm really just like i don't really give fuck what you think like i'm gonna do what i want to do if i want to go to germany if i want to go on a solo trip to germany i'm gonna do that yes ma'am I am I'm going to do that if I want to decide that I'm going to take a jewelry making class I'm going to do it for the next six weeks I'm going to do that if I want to sign up for a pottery class and that's going to be my my sole focus for the month I'm going to do that like I just think that I'm in a space of trying to figure it out and I think a lot of people would look at me as very lost right now but I feel more found than I've ever been in my entire life before I feel like I was always always following the rules following the structure doing everything exactly how you're supposed to going to college getting the corporate job getting everything that you're supposed to and I just wasn't happy doing those things and I'm trying to find a happy medium between having a career and also being creative at the same time which I feel like everybody is trying to do and so adding a dating life on top of that is stressful but obviously that could also add a benefit too like you want somebody to be your plus you know not your negative and I think for a long time the people that I was dating in my past always weighed me down I don't think I've been in a relationship for a very long time where the person lifted me up i feel like i constantly did the uplifting i feel like I'm, i was constantly pulling people to be like come on come on and i haven't had that relationship where i feel like we're both doing that to each other or that person's lifting me up it's not like oh i climb up the ladder a little bit and then grab you and then you climb up the ladder a little bit and then you grab me i never had that and so that's what i'm like looking for i feel like i have a better idea of who i'm looking for in a person like the qualities of a person which is good and i have been on a five month almost six months months now of not dating i feel very like clear-headed i can't wait to look back at these and see how much i've changed i feel like this is like a video diary of my life and all of you guys along with me but um yeah that's just my little life update um i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i kind of just wanted to do like a housekeeping episode of just like what's been going on in my life because i feel like i haven't really shared much about my life and what's been going on in life you know babe but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i hope this was a fun episode for you guys where we just kind of got to like hang out and talk and just be like girls you know what i mean don't forget to like and subscribe the alleged podcast and i will see you next episode allegedly love you